It's Friday, so you know what that means. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's the only one on the panel who still looks like his yearbook picture. Host of the Guy Benson Show, Guy Benson. <laughs> If only his jokes were as sharp as his razors. Comedian and founder of Western Razor Company, David Angelo. She's like a pothole when she's on the street. People are always trying to avoid her. New York Times bestselling author and Bucks News contributor, Cat Tim. And finally, he trims his beard with a grazing flock of sheep. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA world champion, Tyrus! <laughs> All right. Before we get to some new stories, let's do this. Greg's Leftovers. Mmm. It's Leftovers, where I read the jokes we didn't use this week. And as always, it's my first time reading them. So if they suck, we'll force Joe Mackey to eat a bucket of mayonnaise with his toes. <laughs> All right. So during the State of the Union Thursday night, President Biden said wealthy people should pay their fair share of taxes. Not so fast, says one man. <laughs> But after Joe Biden's hyper-frenetic speed read of his speech, it's safe to say authorities now know who the White House coke belongs to. <laughs> all in all, however, Republicans have to admit Joe's got something their candidate doesn't. A good dealer. <laughs> also during the speech, a protester stood up and screamed unintelligibly. What a jerk. Didn't he know the only person who could do that at the State of the Union is the president? <laughs> Meanwhile, more than a dozen Democratic Congresswomen wore white to bring attention to women's rights. Oh, I'm sorry, those were Biden's nurses. <laughs> eh, one hit. Yeah, huh? <laughs> Democrats scolded Biden for referring to the murderer of Lakin Riley as an illegal. Talk about priorities. Next thing you know, they'll scold MSNBC for calling a mental patient a TV host. <laughs> <laughs> Unnecessary, but good. 57-year-old Mike Tyson will face 27-year-old Jake Paul in a boxing match that will stream on Netflix. Tyson says he plans to kiff the fit out of him. <laughs> I know. Hope he's not watching. <laughs> Fans are looking forward to an exciting fight, or as the New York Times calls it, another young white man beating up an elderly black male. <laughs> Pittsburgh area nudist group is renting out an alley for a naked bowling night. All participants are asked to keep an eye on their own ball bags. <laughs> Nine Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia have been convicted for their religious beliefs. But lawyers think they won't enter prison as no one will answer the door for them. <laughs> A Florida man has pleaded guilty to illegally selling thousands of turtles. The judge rejected his claim for leniency since business was slow. That's for the kids. You can clip that out and they can listen to that one. <laughs> Outrage after an Oklahoma school held a fundraiser where it had students lick peanut butter off each other's toes. <laughs> officials, school officials defended the practice, saying you need peanut butter to go with the toe jam. <laughs> this week, Harrison Ford got a colonoscopy to the Indiana Jones theme song. In a related story, Richard Gere got a colonoscopy to the theme song to Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> Joke will never go away, will it? Not even true. Anyway, you remember Rose Montoya, the transgender influencer who went topless at a White House event? Rose now says his dog is also trans <laughs> because he was neutered. I guess that means Prince Harry is trans, too. <laughs> New reports say that a Jack Russell Terrier bit off a man's penis. 
but police are working effortlessly to return the penis back to its owner. <laughs> it's been attacked by dogs. The New York Times is being sued after firing an employee in need of brain surgery. True, imagine if the Times did that to every employee in need of brain surgery. <laughs> Let's see, it would be empty, like that stock photo of an empty office. Well played. Thank you. This weekend, we're supposed to set our clocks forward an hour for daylight savings time. That means you lose an hour, which means more to some people than others. <laughs> New data shows that more people have been killed on New York City's subway system since the start of 2020 than in the 15 years prior. But as Mayor Adams points out, it's never been easier to get a seat. <laughs> Grim. John Kerry says people would feel better about the war in Ukraine if Russia would reduce its emissions. People would also feel better if John Kerry would go back to his home on Easter Island. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. The Veterans Health Administration has overruled plans to ban the famous VJ Day photo because it didn't meet today's standards for consent. Apparently, Rima Ann Nelson, the bureaucrat behind the ban, doesn't like semen. <laughs> what? So, Navy. And he's in the Navy, guys. Finally, on The View last week, Whoopi Goldberg fantasized about Joe Biden jailing every Republican, while jo Joy Behar fantasized about the usual. <laughs> don't applaud that. I don't need your mercy clap. Now to the news. Biden was feeble, but at least he said illegal. And so Democrats boo because Biden said something true. It's time for... The Spectacle from the Receptacle. Nice. Thank you. So last night, President Biden addressed the nation in his State of the Union. Too bad the nation was Ukraine. <laughs> But then he took indirect swipes at Trump and contrasted saving democracy against the threat of extremism. You could see it coming. Without achievements, all you have are attacks. But it makes you wonder, which president is the one that's out for revenge? The one having fun while being sued or the other shouting at the sky like a stranded castaway at passing planes? Biden seems to want to settle more scores than a geriatric John Wick. <laughs> Of course, afterwards, Democrats cherry pick moments of clarity, and the rest of us point out what's left the endless, accelerated gibberish spewing from Biden's pie hole. It was all sound and fury, signifying senility. But it's all part of a theatrical display of tribal pickleball, a back and forth of groans and cheers, which is why Trump seems so weird being part of it to begin with. Who knew that a game show host tycoon was the one who couldn't fit into this asinine artifice? But there was one moment that crystallized what we're dealing with here. It's the unforgivable, repellent response to this car crash moment. Watch. It's not about him. It's not about me. I'd be a winner. Not really. I... Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by illegals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you, having lost children myself. You catch any of that? <laughs> what the? First, Joe called Lincoln Riley, the murdered nursing student, Lincoln Riley, Lincoln Riley. I mean, I don't blame him. It's probably the first time he even heard of the poor girl. And I give him points for trying. The bar is so low for Joe. I'm grateful he didn't call her Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> but were the media and the libs pissed off at that? No. 
That would mean they actually have a heart. What was worse than mangling the victim's name was mislabeling her vicious attacker, her vicious killer. Here's Nancy expressing disgust over Joe's use of the word illegal to describe Lakin's killer. Now, you should have said undocumented, but I, that's not a big thing, okay? What, what's the big thing yeah, about that? No, 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 I, was, I, I actually wasn't even going to ask about that. I was just going to ask more about the moment, but you do think that he should have said undocumented? That wasn't going to be my question. Well, we usually say undocumented. Uh -huh. He said illegal. Think about that. The takeaway for CNN anchor Dana Bash is the word allocated for a murderer, not the president's ignorance and ambivalence over the victim. Feelings of murderers matter more than their victims or their families. But remember, these are the same people who chastise anyone who misgenders murderous men who claim to be women. We must comply to their evil demands, even if they don't comply to the laws of humanity. Leave it to the New York Times to chime in, quote, Mr. Biden's use of the term triggered immediate backlash from liberal Democrats and immigration advocates who accused the president of dehumanizing undocumented migrants by highlighting the killing and using the term illegal. So Biden accidentally told the truth and called an illegal immigrant an illegal and the media pounces. Come on, guys. It's not like Joe led a criminal into the country who murdered a jogger. Oh, wait, he did. So Joe butchers a young woman's name who was already butchered by someone who got in because Joe butchered the border. And the press isn't angry that Lake and Riley was brutally murdered. They're angry that somebody noticed. But how's Joe taking all of this the day after his speech? Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel really good, man. I feel really good. I don't really remember it, but uh, I had both guns blazing. I heard the yell! I had the whisper. I heard the yell! I had the whisper. And then come November, I got an October surprise. I'll put them all together and I'm gonna debut the Yesper! <laughs> Guy, uh, I'm aware it was way past your bedtime. But I'm sure you were able to stay up extra late to watch the address. What did you make of it? What were the high and lows for you? So I know it's my job to watch something like this and then opine on it, but yesterday was my birthday. Aww. So I gave myself the gift. <laughs> Thank you. And so what's it like turning 25? Mm. <laughs> He's just bitter because he wasn't invited to the Sweet 16. <laughs> we wouldn't have let you in anyway. Chuck E. Cheese has very strict security. But I gave myself the birthday gift of not watching the State of the Union address. And I really? feel like I, I'm standing by that decision. That whole spectacle that you just showed about Lake and Riley and the back and forth with the member of Congress uh, decked out in red. I'm sort of glad to have missed all of that. The thing that is sort of interesting about the parsing around using the term illegal. I feel like, and you alluded to this, if you come to the country illegally and then you go to multiple cities and commit multiple crimes culminating in a murder, I think at some point you have earned the word illegal. Right. And for, on multiple levels. And for people to be upset about that shows you how demented our politics are right now. Deeply, deeply demented. Yeah. By assigning uh, xen xenophobia to using the phrase illegal, it protects any corrective response against their ideology. He's David. a newcomer, and right? Yeah. He's a newcomer. He's a newcomer. Yeah. David, good to see you as always. I'm sure you were glued to the TV in your tiny hovel. I, you in know, your bed, I, in your bed sit. It's true. I have a small apartment. <laughs> But I tell you, I thought Biden was on fire last night. Yeah. yeah. I mean, by that I mean I I thought he, he looked like a burn victim. <laughs> yeah. he, like what's going on with his actual like face? I didn't know. I mean, weird. we are being ruled by. Did you see the shot? Even like the, all the Congress people, it's like we're being ruled by Halloween decorations. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's, it's an issue for me. It is. They're, and they're sitting there taking self. This is what kills me as he's walking in. They're all like getting in to take selfies. And these are people that should not have pictures of themselves around. No. Hideous. It's disgusting. If they can't take care of themselves, how can they represent us? It's a nightmare. And I didn't, you know, I didn't even know what he said in the speech. 
I turned the captions on and it just said, you tell me. <laughs> what kind of... Nicely done. Thank you. Thank so I move on now, or do you have anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, that's about it. I peaked. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing when to go is always the best. Yeah. Cat, how were you watching this? Was it? I, I, I get the sense that you have the same feeling that we all do. With this is just save like, some Adderall for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt. What he was like, super fired up for right. sure. And there is an Adderall shortage, so <laughs> I felt like being I was being taunted almost. <laughs> Um, the, the guy that was yelling, that ran in, he was actually a, a gold star father. Right. Whose, whose, whose son was killed in Afghanistan. Right. And then the man was arrested. Exactly. So I feel like whenever he comes down from whatever he was on last night, the first thing he should do is have all those charges be dropped immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I also think when I was watching it, the fact that he started with Ukraine, I thought that I missed some. Because I, wa <laughs> I was watching it in bed. I like the cat here, the dog here. I was watching it. And I was like, oh, I missed the beginning. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh, no, no, no. That is what he decided. Yeah, that's a, that was <laughs> that's, the starting point. That's his starting point. Was, how about when you're the president of a country, you start by talking about your own country? Yeah. That seems to me like... I, that's what I would go with. Right, exactly. And and the great things about the country, you could. I mean, even if you want to talk about our country's border first or second, but not the Ukraine's border, and then going into threats to democracy abroad and home, how was, we work that together. It's just so weird, all the Democrats, like, standing and cheering for war. I was like, <laughs> things have changed. Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.